last night's brutal slaying of a young woman in a stalled car on the Coast View Road. This is the third such murder in as many months. Police officials believe the cases are related. All three killings have taken place in dense fog, which is exactly what the weatherman has on tap for us tonight. The forecast calls for low cloud and coastal fog to continue through. We'll have more news on the hour. Now back to the mellow side of today's jazz. Thanks, Bill, and welcome back to the green room. Hello? Stan? Where are you? Still in San Francisco? Well, I understand how important the deal is. Well, no, of course you can't walk away from it now. Well, it's a little creepy with the fog and all, but you know how my imagination gets going. I'll be fine. I love you too. I miss you. Okay, bye. to you, please. I got car trouble. Excuse me, lady. I'm sorry I had to bother you. What's the matter? I run out of gas. Uh, well, there's a gas station about a mile and a half down the road. Could I come in and use your phone and see if I can get them to send out a man? I'm sorry. I can't let you in. Hey, wait, wait. Look, I don't like to bother you, lady, but my girlfriend's in the car. Look, I'm not opening the door now. Please, go away. I, I don't want to leave her alone. If you could just... Just a moment. I know it's the middle of the night, Mrs. Wilson, but this is important. You've seen this man before, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, earlier this evening, uh, around seven. You're sure about the time? Well, yes, my husband phoned just before seven. You see, I told you the truth. What did he say he wanted? To use the phone, he said his car ran out of gas. Oh, checks out. Would you let me go now, please? I must get to the hospital. Take it easy. We'll get you there. What happened? Sanchez's girl was missing when he got back to his car. We found her on the beach about a mile from here, unconscious. Oh, God. Do you expect your husband home soon, Mrs. Wilson? Yes, any time now. Well, you better lock up. Sorry to bother you. Good night. Good night. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Wilson. I'm calling about Miss Turan. I see. But she hasn't regained consciousness? Uh -huh. Would you please call me if you hear anything? Yes, I'll be at the number that I left you. Thank you. The police were here, and I have been up all night long. No, they were in my house, too. I'll get dressed. I'll get the coffee. Where's Stan? San Francisco. I blame myself for what happened to that girl. I really do. 
She could have been safely inside the house. I did a terrible thing, Simon. You had no way of knowing what would happen. You only did what was sensible at the time. Oh, sure. It's a lot easier for you to feel detached. I gave the police the plot of a show I've been watching on TV last night from 7 to 8. But it's a lousy alibi. I wrote the damn thing. No, it's a perfect alibi. No writer in the world would be away from a TV at a time like that. This one would be. Watching what a director does to your script is a form of masochism I don't usually practice. What form do you usually practice? Oh, unrequited passion. Especially when it comes to married ladies. Hey, Care. Oh, hello, Rick, Hi. Ed, Tom. Right back. Gotta go. Can't take these healthy outdoor types. See you later. Bye. Hey, we heard about last night. You okay? Yeah, I'm all right. You know, we were probably the last one to see that girl. What? We came in just before the fog, and they were sitting on the dock together. Did you tell all this to the police? Yeah, but last we heard, Sanchez was on the loose. Hey, why don't you come out with us? Yeah, it'll do you some good. No, thanks. Not today. I'll see you later. All right, see ya. Excuse me, yes? Doctor, I'd like to find out about a young woman who's checked in here last night. Her name is Tehran, Marta Tehran. Did you inquire at the desk downstairs? Well, yes, but I got the usual routine, you know, condition unchanged, patient doing as well as can be expected. Uh, I really need to know. Essentially, that's about all we can tell you. Are you a friend of the patients? <sighs> Look. I just want to know that everything possible is being done for her. And, and if there's any expenses or... She's still in a coma and her chances aren't very good. I'm sorry. Excuse me, I've got to go now. Thank you. Money is very good when you must buy something, Mrs. Wilson. What is it that you must buy? I just want to do it. Can. Too late, lady. You are too late. Last night, it would have cost you nothing. Today, all the money in the world is not enough. If you could just understand how I feel. Words. Only words. You cannot buy what you want with words, either. Last night, if a stray dog had come scratching at your door, afraid and cold and whining to be let in, what would you have done, eh? That's not the same. You would have let the dog in. Don't worry about paying, Mrs. Wilson. I make you this promise. You will get your chance to pay. And I will be there to collect. I'm sorry, Mr. Sanchez. We did all we could.
Karen. Simon. You want to put that thing away before it goes off? How did you get in? Through the kitchen. I saw the light. I figured that's where you were. But the door was locked. It was open. I locked it. You scared me half to death. That's better. You want a drink? No, thanks. Stan won't be home for a while, will he? Actually, I expect him any minute. Oh, come off it, Karen. All the planes are grounded. I heard it on the radio. So be hospitable. This isn't a night for either one of us to be alone. Being alone doesn't bother me. No, of course not. You walk around the house with a gun every night, don't you? All right. So I'm a little jumpy. I just can't get over what happened here last night. And I think the healthiest thing for you to do is to talk about it. Sure you don't want a drink? Um, ginger ale, please. Okay. There. Thanks. There's a morbid fascination about crimes of violence, Karen. Most of us, even the most civilized, are not above the sort of thing that took place out there last night. That's not true at all. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about our conscious level of thinking. Consciously, most of us have all the proper feelings about crime. Shock, horror, revulsion, so forth. But subconsciously, subconsciously, it's a different story. How are you going to prove a thing like that? It's not difficult. Consider some of the basic drives that led to the events of last night. Oh, Simon, you don't really know what they were. Oh, yes, I do. There are very few men in this world who don't also know, if they're honest. I'd rather talk about something else. Bear with me just a little longer, Karen. Do I have a choice? A choice. And there's a key word. How many things do we do, not because we want to, but because we have no choice? Because husband, mother, father, church, or the police say this is what we must do. Can't we simply want to do them? Uh, if you mean be conditioned into wanting to do them, yes. But that doesn't mean anything. We're conditioned not to kill. Right up until the time there's a war. Then the machinery shifts gears, and we're conditioned to kill. But do you know why this is accomplished with such comparative ease? Shall I tell you? Can I stop you? <laughs> it's because buried deep down inside all of us, there's a murderer or something even more evil. That man out there in the fog last night? He was overcoming a frustration, violently. We're all frustrated every day in many ways. And that's why we unconsciously identify with him. The greater the goal, the greater the drive. My goal's much more modest and attainable. Do you want to know what it is? Go home, Simon. We'll talk again in the morning. I'm tired of talking. Simon! No! No! Hey, Karen, it's just us. Rick! What's wrong? It's Simon! It's Simon. He attacked me. Oh, well, calm down. He hurt calm you? Down. He attacked me. What? Should we go to the sheriff? No, it's faster to call from inside the house. No, he's still in there. Okay, don't worry. It's three against one. What do you think? Well, he could be our killer. Tom, you check in the basement. I'll check in here.
Hey, Tom. Nathan? No. Upstairs. Rick! I don't want you to hurt him. Don't worry, Care. It's okay. Long gone. I'll call the police. How you feeling, Care? A lot better with you here, thanks. Good. Yeah, can I speak to Officer Geary, please? Somebody ought to write a book called What to Do Until the Cops Come. <laughs> Hi, Rick Garrison speaking. Calling from the Wilson's place on the marina? Yeah, could you send a few men over and while you're at it, have them check out Simon Carter's place? Seems Mr. Carter was over here and gave Mrs. Wilson a hard time. I think he may be the killer we're all after. She's sitting right here. We'll take care of her. Okay, we'll be waiting for you. doing the light bothers me hurts my baby blue eyes <laughs> mm. last night was a real gas <laughs> yeah starting with the gas in the afternoon it's just talking about the gas we siphon from sanchez car what he drained almost all the gas out of his tank when he was still on the dock with this girl we knew he wouldn't get very far he didn't. The fact is, he only got as far as your place, right, Karen? We're through with waiting for you, Karen. I don't like that! Let me go! Let her go! I watched you assault Mrs. Wilson. Stay away from her. Call the police. Wait. Mr. Sanchez. I came here to harm you. But I couldn't have done it. I'm sorry. Come in. Please. 